right, the first thing we're going to cover is built for drag and drive. I know everyone is thrashing right now, getting ready for upcoming drag and drive events. This segment is brought to us by our friends at Sweet Patina. Guys, if you need any kind of patina or car care product, go to sweetpatina.com. The first vehicle we're going to cover is Red Hat Scotty, the dude, and Noah of Questionable Performance Solutions, building a brand new car for Race Week or Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0. Guys, this will be the first drag and drive event that they have attended without the rickety rocket. That's right. Scotty has decided to not do anything questionable on the rickety rocket. They are going full out on the cage on it, which meant they would not have that car ready for race week. They're not gonna miss a drag and drive. This new car is simply a thrown together hodgepodge of extra parts from other builds. He bought the car in 2015 or 16 with a four cylinder and an auto with a 5.3 in the hatch, gave $1,000 for the whole thing, sold the 5.3 a few days later for 600 bucks and put the car back in the corner. He says, set up this time, 5.3 from the pick and pull, unknown mileage or condition. It's been sitting in the corner for two years. It's getting a sloppy stage two cam, turbo 400 out of who knows what, a 3200 stall from Renegade Performance, a Dorman LS1 intake, 8.8 and 355 gears. Guys, the goal for them on this car is shooting for high 12s in the quarter mile and they are picking uh, they are packing their dry nitrous kit for the last day to see if it can go mid to high 11s now if you know questionable performance guys you know they can put a car together you know they can make stuff work you know they can make stuff happen they were one of the teams that swapped an engine in the parking lot on race week 2.0 2020 so you know they can get it done you know they're going to have a good time guys i cannot wait to see the progress of this car guys we will be keeping updates on that car on our page but probably the best way to find most current information is to follow questionable performance solutions on facebook and youtube i'll put those links down in the comments all right guys next up is mike chenoweth with the Roadrunner that you guys know is famous now for hitting the deer at the end of Midwest Drags at Edgewater Motorsports Park. The car, 150 miles an hour, slams on the brakes, the deer hesitates, boom, venison for everybody, okay? Now, Mike's on the waiting list for Drag Week, but he says he is working to attend that at all costs. From the looks of all the posts and stuff, you can see the pictures. It looks like it only damaged the body panels. I know they have done a, a few additional upgrades to the exhaust and intake side of things from the turbos, but uh, the fender is repaired and back on the car. As you can see, he did finish Midwest Drags with a 94555 average. And so he is just out of the top 100 fastest racers list for 2022. This car was certainly one of my favorite cars of Midwest Drags. It sounds amazing. It looks amazing. And guys, it moves out. Best pass that he turned in on Midwest Drags was a 9106. If he can keep that kind of time, he most likely will stay in the top 100, but will be very, very close to being on the bubble. Next up is Brady Bluma in the Lucky Sock 66 C10. Guys, this truck, again, one of my favorites from race week last year, won the Hot Rod Class Twin Turbo LS, and you know I am a first-gen C10 guy. Uh, this truck, back in April, a freak accident at a local cruise night uh, burnout competition. A, another participant, throttle hung wide open, ends up flipping the car right into the side of the Lucky Sock. Sad situation. That was the end of April. Brady has been fighting with the insurance company since then. He finally, this last week, said, screw it. I'm over it. Uh, it's time for freedom. The 4th of July, he started pulling the truck back apart to repair it. He is on the search for a good bedside, for a passenger side, step side, for a first gen uh, C10. Um, I think at this point he's open to anything, definitely wants that. Look, we hope he gets it sorted out with insurance, but our main concern is, is he going to come be able to come back and defend his title for 2022 at race week in the hot ride class? Good luck, Brady. We're on your side, bud. Huge news. Dragon Drive Addiction is hosting an end of the year awards show at PRI 2022. We want to reward you racers for your hard work throughout the year. 
the fastest 100 list, 9 through 14 second top 25, the regional list, the eighth mile list. This is our way to say thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for laying it out, putting it on the line to make these lists. You know what you gotta do? You gotta turn it to 11, you gotta turn it up. Go follow Drag and Drive everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or find us on the website, dragandrive.com for the full lists of lists. All right, guys, and you know, one of our favorite people is Polly Castiglione. It's a crazy story. If you've seen the pictures the last couple of days, makes the entire week. His last pass of the week is a good one. Gets to the end of the track and the motor lets go. I mean, talk about a motor staying together just long enough. In the pictures, you'll see some of the damage that was done. Here is the update from him. He said the crank is at Storm Crankshaft in Yonkers, New York. Hadn't heard back yet, but hopes they can cut it and, uh, and polish it and it'd be good to go. The block is looks like he cracked number one cylinder. So number one cylinder is gonna get a sleeve. He's got new rods, uh, Carrillo I-beam rods from Howard's cam. Lifters are on the way to get refurbished. Here's what happened. And Paul, the, the great thing about Polly is he owns it. This was the first engine that he had put together, okay? His engine builder, Frankie Ford, was, he said it was actually shocked it lasted the week. So turns out, here's what Polly said. Turns out I put the wrong bearings in the motor. I did freshen it up myself. This was the first time and I did all the ordering and assembling. They were standard cut. Clevite bearings were slight tad too big uh, for the rod journals. Number one rod bearing was pulled out of the journal and was walked against the crane. Said it's fixable and uh, maybe some upgrades on the horizon. So he said being a drag week addict, he's got two or three of everything. And now since everything is back ordered, it pays off to have parts on the shelf. Good luck to you. I hope you get it fixed. We're rooting for you. We'll see you at drag week.